Hello, everyone. Editing Nintendo fan here. Uh, this video meant to be released a few weeks ago, uh, so as such, a few of these titles are already released. This includes numbers 9, 6, and 5. Um, hopefully that doesn't detract from your enjoyment of this video at all. Um, thank you very much for checking it out and uh, seeing what my top 10 picks currently are for the year. Um, there's, there's also been a wide slew of other titles uh, announced. And uh, I think this list is still my definitive list for the year. Uh, however, as I say in the video, there are always changes, there are always additions, there's always new announcements, all that kind of fun stuff. In addition, if any one of you wants to check out one of my live streams, I'm currently on break. However, I'm thinking of coming back fairly soon. Um, you can also you can check me out on Twitch. Oh tv slash nintendo fan 10039 for that or you can check me out on youtube for any vods um thank you very much for watching and i uh, hope you enjoy the video greetings and friendos and welcome back to the channel in today's thrilling video we're diving into my top 10 most anticipated games of 2024 after the incredible lineup of titles we saw in 2023, I'm eager to see if this year can match or even surpass the magic of its predecessor. Now, I must mention that a few titles have already made their debut this year, but fear not, my top picks were carefully selected based on January's timeframe, ensuring we capture the essence of anticipation for the upcoming releases. So join me as we embark on an exploration of some of the most exciting games slated for 2024. Number 10. Mario, the iconic plumber from the Mushroom Kingdom, has left an indelible mark on the gaming world with his diverse array of adventures. From classic platformers to the high octane races of Mario Kart, challenging puzzles in Mario vs. Donkey Kong, epic brawls in Super Smash Bros., to the festive chaos of Mario Party. Mario has been at the forefront of gaming for decades. Amidst these myriad experiences, the regal Princess Peach has been a steadfast companion on many of Mario's quests. While Princess Peach has had relatively few standalone games. One notable title that stands out is Super Princess Peach. In this unique DS outing, players assumed control of the beloved monarch, managing her emotions to rescue both Mario and Luigi. Despite the limited exposure of this DS gem, Nintendo is now treating fans to another Princess Peach adventure. Princess Peach Showtime, positioned as the spiritual successor to the DS game, this new installment allows players to once again guide Peach through a captivating journey. Unlike its predecessor, Princess Peach Showtime takes a creative twist, transforming the gameplay dynamics. Instead of manipulating Peach's emotions, players now witness her metamorphosis based on the thematic stage play she finds herself in. The initial showcase of the game left me intrigued, promising a delightful experience. However, I couldn't help but notice a somewhat whimsical and potentially childish aesthetic, raising concerns about the level of challenge it offers to seasoned gamers like myself. The game, slated for release, on March 22nd, seems to boast a myriad of fantastical outfits for Peach. From playing the role of a detective, a chef, and a cake decorator to adopting the guise of a ninja and a sword fighter, Peach's wardrobe is as diverse as her adventures. Each outfit introduces unique gimmicks and gameplay styles 
promising a fresh and engaging experience. Princess Peach Showtime appears to be a vibrant and innovative addition to the Mario universe. As an avid gamer, I'll be keenly observing its development, hoping it strikes the right balance between whimsy and challenge. Join Princess Peach in this entertaining adventure as she takes center stage, inviting players to explore the Mushroom Kingdom like never before, confronting new challenges and facing enemies while showcasing Princess Peach's unparalleled abilities. The anticipation for this game is undeniably high, and I look forward to diving into this enchanting experience come March 22nd. Number 9 As we reflect on the recent release of the RPG masterpiece, Persona 3 Reload, we can appreciate the culmination of the Persona 3 series, which has witnessed a multitude of iterations. From FES to the original game, each contributing to the rich tapestry of this captivating universe. Having recently delved into the world of Persona 3 at PAX West 2023, I can attest to the sheer joy it brought me. While my knowledge of the Persona 3 universe may not be exhaustive, the glimpses provided in trailers have left a lasting impression, particularly with regard to its aesthetics. Despite speculations that not all features from previous editions may make the cut in this remake, Persona 3 Reload promised to embody the quintessential Persona experience. The familiar rhythm of making friends with fellow students, engaging battles against demons, is the signature formula that fans of the Shin Megami Tensei and Persona series have come to expect. Having already acquainted myself with the vibrant cast of characters through Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight and currently embarking on the extensive journey of Persona 5 Royal, I find myself captivated by the enthralling narratives and unique gameplay mechanics that define the Persona universe. While the release of Persona 3 Reload on its February 2nd release date was not an immediate purchasing decision for me, it undoubtedly remains a game that holds my attention. I'm cautiously optimistic, hoping for a potential price drop or the revelation of a royal version of Persona 3 Reload, a trend seen with Persona 5. Such incentives could sway my decision to delve into this RPG gem ensuring a comprehensive and enhanced gaming experience. In summary, Persona 3 Reload beckons players to return to the acclaimed world of Persona, immersing themselves in a reloaded edition that encapsulates the essence of high school life. Form bonds with unique characters unravel the intricacies of a gripping narrative that seamlessly combine social simulation and dungeon crawling. As the game's release date approached, the anticipation for this revitalized RPG adventure was palpable, and I eagerly await the opportunity to dive into its depths when I eventually decide to pick this RPG remake up post-launch. Number 8 as an avid enthusiast of WayForward's game development prowess, the sheer delight was palpable when they unveiled the commitment to revive the long-shelved Game Boy Advance version of Shantae. The announcement of Shantae Advance, Risky Revolution, not only as a Game Boy Advance cartridge, but also extending its reach to new systems, sent waves of excitement through the gaming community. Being an ardent admirer of Shantae's escapades, the trailer for Shantae Advance, Risky Revolution only solidified my anticipation for what promises to be another timeless addition to the Shantae legacy. The return of animal transformations coupled with the classic sprite work 
reminiscent of Shantae's origins on the Nintendo Game Boy Color, is a testament to WayForward's commitment to honoring the series' roots while pushing its boundaries. This upcoming platforming masterpiece appears poised to secure its place as a new classic in the Shantae series. The vibrant and dynamic gameplay showcased in the trailer featuring our beloved half-genie hero, Shantae, embarking on a risky revolution to thwart the nefarious plans of the infamous pirate Risky Boots promises a thrilling experience. Expectations are high for a delightful blend of platforming action, enchanting transformations, and the strategic deployment of magic spells. The prospect of immersing myself in this eagerly awaited adventure has already earned Shantae Advance Risky Revolution a special place in my Shantae Shrine. The nostalgia inducing elements coupled with the anticipation of new and innovative gameplay mechanics have me eagerly counting the days until its speculative release window in 2024. In summary, Ante Advance Risky Revolution is not just a revival of a shelved classic, but a bold step forward for the beloved franchise. WayForward's dedication to both the heritage and evolution of Shantae's adventures makes this upcoming installment a must-play for fans and newcomers alike. The prospect of experiencing Shantae's daring escapades once again, is an exciting journey that promises to leave an indelible mark on the world of platforming games. Number 7 Delving into the realm of Metroidvanias, a diverse genre that encompasses both 3D and 2D experiences, as well as a range of difficulty levels, one standout title that has captivated fans since its 2017 release is Hollow Knight. Known for its challenging gameplay and atmospheric world, it has become a beloved classic in the genre. Enter Hollow Knight Silk Song, a highly anticipated sequel announced in February 2019. Despite the extended silence surrounding its development, the excitement among fans remains palpable. The playable character Hornet, who once served as a formidable adversary to the knight, in the original game, takes center stage in Silk Song. This shift in perspective promises a fresh and enthralling experience for players. While a concrete release date or window is still elusive, my optimism leads me to speculate. Hollow Knight Silk Song might grace fans with its presence sometime in 2024. As a devoted fan of the Metroidvania genre, Hollow Knight holds a special place in my gaming heart. Although I haven't yet conquered the challenges of the original game, the prospect of a new installment from Team Cherry is undoubtedly something to look forward to. Journeying deeper into the haunting world of Hollow Nest, Hollow Knight Silk Song invites players to assume the role of Hornet, a fierce protector. Through this sequel, Expect to navigate through new environments, confront even more challenging foes, and peel back the layers of mystery that lie beneath the surface. The anticipation for this upcoming adventure is fueled by the promise of an immersive and challenging experience, characteristic of the Metroidvania genre. As we await the official word on the release date, the mere thought of Hollow Knight Silk Song entering the gaming landscape in 2024 is enough to keep fans, including myself, on the edge of their seats. Team Cherry's dedication to crafting rich and atmospheric worlds suggests that this sequel will be nothing short of a masterpiece. Continuing the legacy set by its predecessor. Number 6 While some might argue it's a bit of a cheat, I'm adamant about including DLC on my list. After all, it's not just about entirely new games, it's about the added experiences, the extended gameplay hours, and the fresh perspectives 
that they bring. And hey, it's my list, right? Enter Splatoon 3, a game that might have waned a bit in my hype and enjoyment, but I'm always game for more ink splattering action. Splatoon 3 has already teased us with a bit of DLC. A nostalgic return to Inkopolis and the beloved Squid Sisters, Kelly and Marie. However, this DLC didn't quite scratch the gameplay itch. That's where the side order DLC steps in to shake things up. Scheduled for release sometime in spring of this year, the side order DLC promises to inject a dose of excitement into Splatoon 3. This DLC is not just about cosmetic additions. It comes packing a brand new single player campaign that's bound to revitalize the Splatoon experience. In this campaign, we take on the role of Agent 8, an octoling in a world drained of color, a concept that brings back memories of the vibrant world in Deep Lob. As you navigate through the city, dominated by the imposing spire of order, you'll be accompanied by a drone claiming to be none other than Pearl. Your mission is clear. Fight off waves of enemies, tackle floor after floor of challenges, and ascend to the pinnacle of the spire to unveil its secrets. What's intriguing is the incorporation of color chips that enhance your abilities, adding an extra layer of strategy to the gameplay. The entire experience is designed to be replayed, reminiscent of roguelike games. While the term roguelike might seem a bit out of place in the context of Splatoon, I can't help but be curious and excited about what the side order DLC has in store. Whether it's the thrill of battling through challenging levels or the allure of uncovering hidden secrets, this DLC is definitely on my radar. And I'll be diving in head first when it launches in spring. Platoon 3's side order DLC seems poised to breathe new life into the ink splattering mayhem, and I'm eager to see how it unfolds. Number 5 As a self-proclaimed humongous Sonic the Hedgehog fan, my enthusiasm for the series has led me to revel in the adventures of the iconic blue blur across numerous games. Sonic Mania, a pinnacle achievement developed by the talented Christian Whitehead, with a captivating musical score by T. Lopes, stands out as one of the most incredible entries in the franchise. While my hopes were set on Sega tapping into this winning formula for Sonic Mania 2, it seems to have a different narrative in store. Enter Penny's Big Breakaway. This exciting new game, set to grace various platforms in early 2024, made its grand entrance during the Nintendo Direct in June 2023, instantly capturing my heart. The more I delve into the details of Penny's Big Breakaway, the more I'm struck by the delightful fusion of Sonic's 3D charm and the whimsical vibes reminiscent of Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. The announcement alone had me hooked, and subsequent reveals have only intensified my excitement. Penny's Big Breakaway introduces us to a charming protagonist armed with a yo-yo for both attacks and movement. The game radiates a sense of specialness with its adorable enemies and the spirited adventure Penny taking center stage. There's an undeniable allure to the landscapes, puzzles, and the epic quest that Penny undertakes. The journey filled with humor and charm, inviting players to uncover the secrets of Penny's world and prove that she's more than ready for the spotlight. Scheduled for launch, whenever that may be, the involvement of T. Lopes, Christian Whitehead, and Evening Star in the creation of Penny's Big Breakaway is a testament to the game's potential to become a timeless classic. The anticipation for this upcoming adventure is heightened by the knowledge that it is crafted by a team known for delivering stellar gaming experiences. In summary, Penny's Big Breakaway beckons players to join a spirited adventure on a quest of epic proportions. Traversing diverse landscapes, solving puzzles, and encountering a world filled with charm and whimsy. 
this game promises to be a standard addition to the gaming landscape. With an all-star lineup behind its development, including T. Lopes, Christian Whitehead, and Evening Star, there's no doubt that Penny's big breakaway will be one for the ages. And I'm eagerly counting down the days until I can get my hands on it. Number 4 In a surprising revelation back in June 2022, a game with a distinct touch emerged from the creative mind of Game Freak designer, Armo Knight director, and Pokemon artist James Turner. Collaborating with Jonathan Biddle, they birthed a unique adventure that introduces players to the plucky squire named Jot. This courageous character stumbles upon a remarkable discovery, a way to escape the confines of their storybook and venture into the three-dimensional realm. What sets this game apart is not only its creative concept, but also the distinctive gameplay mechanics designed by Turner and Biddle. The anticipation for this game, set to grace our hands in 2024, has been steadily building since its announcement. From the glimpses revealed, it appears that Jot has the ability to transition seamlessly from the pages of a picture book to the vast expanse of a three-dimensional living room and even into various objects scattered throughout the room. The sheer uniqueness of this approach promises an innovative and engaging gameplay experience that has piqued my curiosity. Beyond its intriguing gameplay, the art style showcased in previews exudes an irresistibly cute charm, adding an extra layer of appeal to the overall package. As someone eagerly following the developments, I can't wait to see how the game unfolds offering players a delightful blend of creativity, exploration, and adorable aesthetics. While specific details about the gameplay mechanics are yet to be fully unveiled, the mere prospect of journeying through a narrative that bridges the gap between the confines of a storybook and the expansive three-dimensional world is enough to heighten the excitement. As we patiently await its arrival in 2024, the Enigma Surrounding This Unique Creation by James Turner and Jonathan Biddle only fuels the anticipation, leaving us eager to experience the magic that awaits within its pages. Number three. As a devoted fan of the Paper Mario series, my excitement reached new heights upon learning that a remake of the beloved classic Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door is set to grace the Nintendo Switch this year. Having been a fan since the original Paper Mario and the Nintendo 64, the prospect of revisiting one of the series' most cherished entries is a cause for celebration. While specific details about how this remake aligns with the original are still shrouded in mystery, the glimpses offered so far have been tantalizing. The introduction of new NPCs, remade music, and a visually stunning graphical overhaul that pays homage to the original all serve as promising indicators of the care and attention invested in this project. Having extensively enjoyed Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door in its original form and even explored the wonders of a randomizer for this fantastic game, my level of excitement for this remake transcends the ordinary. My fervent hope is that this endeavor reinvigorates the RPG aspects that define the charms of Paper Mario. Ideally, it would pave the way for future entries to return to the beloved formula that endeared the series to fans. A timeless narrative unfolds as Peach falls victim to the x -Nauts. Bowser attempts his own version of a rescue mission, and the ensuing wacky escapades ensue. My aspiration is that this remake introduces a new generation of players to the magic that made Paper Mario so beloved initially. Noteworthy changes to the UI have caught the attention of many sparking speculation about the possibility of a dual release for both the Nintendo Switch and its successor. 
While this remains speculative, the prospect of toggling between classic and revamped music, extended story content, a Luigi's Marvelous Compass mode, and the introduction of new badges would undoubtedly elevate the remake to new heights. However, even if these ideas don't materialize, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door remains a day one pickup for me. The game's fantastic charm, humor, and engaging gameplay make it a timeless classic, and I wholeheartedly encourage anyone who hasn't experienced it to give this game a shot. This journey into the papery world of Mario is truly a gaming experience that feels like it's been a thousand years in the making. Number 2 Gotta love that click! What is this? No way! No freaking way! No! Metroid! 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 Metroid Prime! Oh! 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 oh. Metroid! In the realm of gaming anticipation, the elusive release of Metroid Prime 4 hangs in the balance, with details yet to emerge about its launch year. Having been first announced in June 2017 and undergoing a substantial development reboot in 2019, the inevitability of its impending release for either the current Nintendo Switch or the mysterious next-gen console lingers tantalizingly. Speculations run rife, with a prevailing belief, including my own, that Metroid Prime 4 may manifest as a dual release, making waves on both existing hardware and the speculated new console. The conjecture intensifies with rumors swirling about Nintendo's next console potentially hitting the shelves this year, adding Metroid Prime 4 to my list of highly anticipated titles. The Metroid series has been an enthralling odyssey for me, spanning from the original to Fusion and the polarizing Other M. However, my journey took a turn when I embarked on the immersive experience of the Metroid Prime trilogy. With only a handful of titles like Metroid Prime Pinball, Metroid Prime Hunters, and Metroid Prime Federation Force, Left unexplored, delving into Metroid lore, I uncovered critical elements, Dark Samus's demise, Silex's daring Metroid egg theft, setting the stage for Metroid Prime 4. The tantalizing key art glimpsed so far fuels excitement for the narrative's evolution, leaving me eager to complete my Metroid Prime 3 streams before the imminent arrival of this long-awaited title. My recent immersion in Samus' latest odyssey, Metroid Dread, has reignited a fervent anticipation for Metroid Prime 4's gameplay reveal. While the foundational gameplay of the main Prime series is anticipated, the sheer magnificence of Metroid Prime Remastered has set lofty expectations or the visual spectacle that awaits in the fourth installment. Envisioning the beautifully rendered Metroids, the exotic planets, Samus' iconic arm cannon, and the possible appearances of Ridley and Kraid only intensifies the eagerness. In the realm of hotly anticipated titles, Samus Aran's return in Metroid Prime 4 stands as a beacon in the iconic Metroid series. This first-person action adventure promises an exploration of alien worlds, a confrontation with menacing creatures, and the unraveling of the mysteries that 
lie deep within the Metroid universe. As the release date remains shrouded in mystery, the fervor surrounding the next chapter of Samus's journey continues to escalate, leaving fans, myself included, on the edge of our seats in anticipation of what awaits in this highly awaited title. Number one. The elusive world of Final Fantasy has remained distant throughout my childhood, observed only through the lens of my cousins playing one of the games, leaving me with fleeting memories of ending cutscenes. My initiation into the realm of Final Fantasy began with Final Fantasy IV, the after years on the Wii. The enigmatic characterization of Cain, oscillating between villainy and kindness intrigued me. The sprightly beauty of a mysterious woman cast its allure. However, my journey through Final Fantasy IV was hindered by the piecemeal sale of the game on the platform, leaving my experience incomplete. Undeterred, I ventured into the quirky realm of my life as a Dark Lord, a weird tower defense game that sparked fond memories of experimenting with strategies alongside my sister. The introduction continued with my sister receiving a DS cartridge, likely Final Fantasy III. Although her hands mostly gripped the controller, I recall stealing moments to immerse myself in the game. The Odyssey concluded with the acquisition of the Wii version of Final Fantasy VII. While the epic cast of characters was familiar, the depth of the game's themes and the grandiosity of the original version eluded my comprehension. Despite turn-based games not being my initial preference, my growing love for the RPG genre and appreciation for the turn-based aspect of classic games paved the way. Sephiroth, the iconic villain, loomed large in my understanding. His black attire and the haunting strains of one-winged angel, leaving an indelible mark. Tifa's allure, even from a young age, and the realization that Cloud wasn't just a meteorological term, further fueled my curiosity and fascination with the world of Final Fantasy. Years elapsed, and my foray into the library's teen section marked a coming-of-age ritual. A wall scroll adorned the ceiling, an artistic portrayal of Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, capturing the climactic clash between Sephiroth and Cloud. The visual spectacle lingered in my memory, an emblem of untold adventures awaiting discovery. As the sands of time continued to trickle away, my focus shifted to the grand stage of gaming presentations. Many years were consecrated to Nintendo, my gaming sanctuary, yet the passage of time led to a growing curiosity about what revelations the other console giants had in store. In a pivotal moment during Sony's E3 presentation in 2015, my screen flickered to life with a mesmerizing, almost photorealistic trailer featuring Cloud. A surge of joy overcame me as I beheld the revelation that one of gaming's most cherished RPGs was to be reborn through a remake. However, as life unfolded its chapters, the ephemeral excitement surrounding the remake would momentarily recede from my conscious thoughts. Undeterred, my unwavering passion for gaming continued to shape my identity. With each passing moment, I delved deeper into the realms of knowledge, navigating the corridors of university with aspirations of contributing to the gaming industry, particularly in the realm of Nintendo, and harboring dreams of game development as a vocation. The journey of attending gaming events became an integral chapter in my narrative. 
Knowing that accessing E3 was a formidable challenge for non-journalists, I contentedly tuned into press conferences from the confines of the library, navigating the era of dial-up and sluggish internet during the time I resided at home with my parents. Residing in Saskatchewan, PAX West emerged as the nearest beacon of gaming camaraderie. In the fall of 2015, I embarked on my inaugural PAX adventure, a serendipitous collision with like-minded souls at the event Forged Connections that endure to this day. Surrounded by newfound friends, PAX offered a sanctuary where shared passion for gaming could thrive. The convention's diverse array of games and opportunities became a playground of joy. For me, it marked a transition from anime conventions as PAX unfolded as a predominantly video game oriented haven. Unbeknownst to me, more years would unfold marked by a continuous rhythm of work, education, and PAX excursions. Then a pivotal moment materialized. In an unexpected turn of events, Square Enix announced a playable demo of Final Fantasy VII Remake at PAX. The year was 2019, and little did I know that this particular PAX would be the catalyst for a life-altering experience. The PAX of 2019 brought forth not only the immersive joy of experiencing the Final Fantasy VII Remake, but also an unexpected encounter that added a layer of intrigue to the event. Approached by a woman at the booth cosplaying as a Shinra Turk, the lively exchange added a memorable twist to my PAX journey. Stepping into the booth, which meticulously replicated a Mako reactor, heightened the anticipation. A short video narrated by Jesse set the stage, and we were ushered outside of the Mako shaped theater to engage with the demo featuring the first boss, the Scorpion Sentinel. As someone who had previously only ventured as far as Costa del Sol in the original game during a Wii playthrough, the prospect of an entire experience dedicated to Midgar left me both perplexed and exhilarated. The demo's control dynamics initially posed a challenge, almost jeopardizing my venture within the time limit. Yet, a swift adaptation to the nuances of the PlayStation controller enabled me to triumph over the Scorpion Sentinel just moments before the demo concluded. A cruel twist awaited, however. Lacking a PlayStation 4, I contemplated that my engagement with the Final Fantasy VII Remake might be a fleeting affair, considering my allegiance to Nintendo titles. As the sands of time continued to flow, my gaming preferences underwent a transformation. Entrenched in the world of Twitch streaming, my channel mostly showcased adventures in Xenoblade Chronicles X and various Metroid titles. The allure of Sony's latest console, the PlayStation 5, beckoned, prompting contemplation. Would Nintendo fan broaden horizons beyond the familiar Nintendo landscape? Balancing frugality with the desire for gaming diversity, I found myself standing at the crossroads. The decision was made. I invested in the PlayStation 5, a leap into uncharted territory as I had bypassed the entirety of the PS4 generation. Excitement fueled my choice, fueled further by the prospect of swinging through the New York skyscrapers in the PS5 version of Spider-Man Miles Morales, reminiscent of the captivating experience from PAX West 2018 with the original Marvel's Spider-Man on PS4. In the midst of exploring available titles, a memory from the previous year resurfaced. Final Fantasy VII Remake 
though the remake had graced the gaming scene a few months prior to the PlayStation 5 release. My eagerness to relive the excellence of this remarkable game surpassed any temporal considerations. Engaged in a conversation with a friend I had met at PAX in 2015, a friend whose camaraderie had endured over the years, I made a resolute decision. Final Fantasy VII Remake would be my streaming focus. The irony lay in my incomplete journey through the original game. My knowledge extended only to sporadic story beats like Genova being Sephiroth's mother. Consequently, I embarked on the remake with little foresight, venturing into the unknown. Perhaps my relative unfamiliarity with the original narrative played a role, but contrary to widespread complaints about the game's alterations, my experience with Remake was nothing short of captivating, embracing the notion that it was mostly a faithful recreation. I reveled in the familiarity of Midgar, assuming it to be a mere echo of the original's grand tale. Little did I anticipate the narrative divergence awaiting me in the concluding chapters. As the plot unfolded in unforeseen directions, I found myself on an exhilarating roller coaster ride. The deviations from the familiar storyline added a layer of unpredictability and excitement. While some purists bemoan the changes, I embrace them wholeheartedly, recognizing the creative freedom taken by Square Enix and anticipating the promise of more content, a commitment explicitly made during the early stages of Remake's promotional campaign. Fast forward to 2022, two years since the debut of the PlayStation 5 and the release of Final Fantasy VII Remake. The interim saw the introduction of some DLC featuring Yuffie in 2021, albeit one with a minimal connection to Cloud and the primary narrative of the Remake trilogy. Then in 2022, Square Enix made waves with the unveiling of Rebirth. This upcoming installment promised an expanded focus on Cloud, Sephiroth, and Zack, deepening the exploration of their intertwined destinies. Additionally, Square Enix dropped a bombshell by announcing the remake of Crisis Core, aptly titled Crisis Core Reunion, slated for a Winter 22 release. During this period, my personal journey through the Final Fantasy universe reached new heights. I traversed the emotional landscape of Crisis Core Reunion, revisited Midgar in the iconic Final Fantasy VII Remake, and experienced the entirety of the original game. My immersion in this fantastical realm knew no bounds as I absorbed every nuance and detail with fervor. Square Enix, attuned to the hunger of fans, carefully fed us morsels of information, fueling excitement and speculation within the community. The anticipation for the second entry in the trilogy, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, reached a fever pitch. Fans, including myself, delved into heated discussions dissecting the possible narrative trajectories and deciphering the implications of Remake's story on this forthcoming installment. The air was thick with excitement, rumors and the collective buzz of a community eagerly awaiting the next chapter in this epic saga. The anticipation surrounding Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is palpable a collective eagerness shared by enthusiasts worldwide, myself included. I firmly believe that this title will undoubtedly contend for the coveted Game of the Year in 2024, although time will be the ultimate judge. The promises it holds are nothing short of monumental. An expansive open world, the thrill of chocobo riding, and the prospect of more 
poignant encounters with the enigmatic Sephiroth. The game, by all indications, appears to be a colossal endeavor. Featuring meticulously reimagined familiar landscapes such as Junon, the Chocobo Farm, and other iconic locales seamlessly updated for the modern era. As the release date looms just around the corner, my excitement has reached unprecedented levels. In my fervor, I've channeled my passion into various outlets. From crafting a cover of Rebirth's Anthem, No Promises to Keep, to daily posts on both my personal Facebook and Twitter accounts. My aim is to cultivate and amplify the anticipation not just for myself, but for fellow enthusiasts eagerly awaiting this momentous launch. The final stretch is upon us, less than a month away from the experience which is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And my readiness to plunge into this gaming masterpiece is indescribable. In my dedication to preserving the purity of my experience, I've opted to shield myself from any potential spoilers by steadfastly avoiding future trailers. I've gathered ample insights about the game and any additional revelations from Square Enix I deem unnecessary. The presence of iconic characters like Elena from the Turks, the allure of the gold saucer, and the promise of a gripping narrative have already stoked the flames of my anticipation. The countdown to the end of the month marking the game's release has begun, and I stand on the precipice of an immersive journey into the rebirth of a legendary gaming saga. Experience the resurgence of a gaming legend in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Immerse yourself in the epic saga of Cloud Strife and his allies as they confront the malevolent Shinra Corporation. With breathtaking visuals and gameplay reimagined for a new era, this is an unmissable experience for both longtime fans and newcomers alike. While the certainty of these games' excellence upon release or adherence to the 2024 timeline remains uncertain, they stand as my most anticipated titles. The dynamic nature of the gaming industry may introduce new contenders as the year unfolds. But in this early juncture of 2024, I consider this roster definitive. While certain releases may evoke more excitement than others, I eagerly anticipate the diverse array of gaming experiences awaiting me in 2024. Whether it's innovative gameplay mechanics, compelling narratives, or cherished classics revitalized for modern platforms, the year holds promise for every gamer. I look forward to sharing my gaming escapades with you all through future live streams. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and I hope this video has brought some joy to your day. Take care, and know that my best wishes extend to each and every one of you, regardless of the time of day.